Guten Morgen, guten Tag, guten Abend. So today we have Kapitel 23, Chapter 23.1, and this is Da Compounds. So we're finally getting to the Da Compounds that were mentioned a few chapters ago, and we will be able to use these now. So these are very useful uh, and very common. So uh, we'll start talking about nouns and pronouns. You already know we're talking about people or things. We don't have to keep repeating the names of the people or items. Instead, we replace full nouns with pronouns. This is like going back to way back. We learned via se and das Buch, which is uh, we see the book, and then you can say via se and s, we see it. You can just replace the book with it. That's just a um, just an accusative pronoun, s. Yeah, to replace das Buch, you replace with s, right? And then you can say via half and dem Kind, we help the child. This is in the dative because half and requires the dative, and you can say via half and im we help him. So you can just replace the full noun with the pronoun. That's uh, the basic idea. And then of course we need to be able to recognize all of those pronouns. And so in the accusative, mich, dich, ihn, sie, es, uns, euch, sie, and sie for all the accusatives. And then the datives are mir, dir, ihm, ihr, ihm, uns, euch, ihnen, and ihnen. So I uh, make sure to refresh those if um, some of them look a little bit unrecognizable. All the pronouns. And then, um, so that's what we do when we replace a noun with a pronoun, right? Um, so when we're talking about subjects, direct objects and indirect objects, pronouns can replace nouns representing either people or things. That was, that's what we were just doing. For subjects, objects and indirect objects. That's what we would use all these nominatives, accusatives, and datas for, right? But when we're talking about objects of prepositions, um, there's a different rule. When the noun um, being replaced refers to a person, then a pronoun can be used, right? You can say, you can say, um, mit mir, with me, mit dir, with you, or ohne mich, without me, ohne dich, without you. Or you could say without her, ohne sie. Or you could say without him, ohne ihn. Or you could say with him, mit ihm. Or with her, mit ihr. So when they're people, you just use the preposition and then whichever uh, case that preposition requires. But when, uh, so with her, with him, whatever it is, right? But uh, so, wir sprechen mit dem Mann. We speak with the man. Wir sprechen mit ihm. So you can just say mit ihm. And it's the dative masculine, so we just put the pronoun in there. That's easy. But um, that only works for people. When the object of a preposition refers to an inanimate object or an idea or a thing, so not a person, um, then we want to say with it, for it, to it, etc. We don't just replace the noun with a pronoun, as you might expect. There's a whole different construction called a da compound. And so you replace the noun with da and attaches to the front of the preposition. So we'll try to replace some uh, objects of prepositions. So, ich verstehe nichts von diesem Thema. I understand nothing about this topic. So, von is kind of like about in this sense. And then diesem Thema, that's the object of the preposition. It's in the dative because von requires the dative. Also, also, bei mit, nach seid von zu. So, dative, uh, object of the preposition. So, what do we want to do if we um, are going to say about it? We're not going to say von ihm, because normally it would be ihm. That's our, uh, that's like a neuter and um, neuter dative pronoun, right? But um, since there's this rule about ina inanimate objects and things, um, and ideas in this case, um, or concepts, uh, with the da compound, we don't we don't do any pronouns. We just do da plus the pronoun or plus the preposition da and the preposition you were using originally, and that means about it or of it. So, haben Sie etwas gegen diesen Film? Do you have something against this film? And so, gegen is our preposition, and diesen Film is our object of the preposition. And so, to make um, against it instead. We'll say da gegen. So we use da and it attaches to the front of the preposition we were using already. Against it. Da gegen, against it. And then, um, wir haben uns für das rote Auto entschieden. 
we have decided on the red car. So Führer is our preposition, and then our object of the prepos preposition is das rote Auto, which is, of course, an inanimate object, so we're not going to use a pronoun per se, we're going to use the da compound, da für. So, wir haben uns dafür entschieden, we have decided on it. Yeah, so um, da plus preposition is a da compound. And then when the preposition begins with a vowel, an r is, a, is added to aid pronunciation, thus making the compound da plus preposition. So, wir sprechen über das Buch, we're talking about the book. Uba meaning about, and it, tra it starts with a vowel, Uba. So we say, wir sprechen darüber. We're talking about it. Because imagine if you didn't have the R, it would be da über, da über, and um, it's just too many vowels next to each other for German. Got to put a consonant in there to separate them. So if the preposition begins with a vowel, like Uba, then it's dar instead of just da. Wir sprechen darüber. We're talking about it. Wir freuen uns auf das Wochenende. We're looking forward to the weekend. So, uh, auf is like to, right? So, auf das Wochenende, to the weekend. And so, wir freuen uns darauf. Auf is, starts with a vowel, so we're going to add the dar and not just the da. So, uh, we're looking forward to it. To it is darauf in this context. Yeah, wir freuen uns darauf. So, here are the da compounds, or maybe da compounds, used to replace a noun. So, da compounds consist of da or dar, plus um, one of the following prepositions. So, all these prepositions we've gone through can be made into da compounds. So, the r is inserted when the preposition begins with a vowel. So, da generally replaces the, a personal or demonstrative pronoun that refers to a singular or plural inanimate object or an idea. So basically, any noun that's not a person. Translate the preposition first, then da as it, them, that, those. Yeah, it could be with, with them, with this, whatever it is, right? So, in der Mitte des Zimmers steht ein Tisch. Und darauf finden sie die gesuchten Papiere. In the middle of the room, there is a table. That's, that's all just the normal first part of the sentence. Um, uh, it's an independent clause. So, in the middle of the room stands a table, or is a table, and on it, so it would be like auf dem Tisch. Normally, without the da situation, it would be auf dem Tisch, on the table, right? So instead of saying, you might say something like auf ihm, because that would be the masculine, um, that would like be the masculine dated, which is what you would need, but um, uh, auf ihm is, uh, that would be for on top of him as a person, but since it's an object like the tisch, there is actually a difference there um, in the case of prepositions. And we're going to say darauf on it, referring back to the table. Hier sind die Bücher. Darin können Sie die Informationen finden, die Sie gesucht haben. Here are the books. Hier sind die Bücher. In them. Darin. So it doesn't matter whether it's singular or plural. It's just saying in uh, the thing I just referred to. So darin in them. Yeah. You can find information you were looking for. Können Sie die Informationen finden, die Sie gesucht haben? In der Ausstellung sind die Pinsel des Künstlers zu sehen. In the exhibit, you can see the artist's brushes. In the exhibit, the artist's brushes are to be seen. You can see them. Damit hat er seine letzten Werke gemalt. So, with them, it's, it refers to die Pinsel, which is um, plural. So the form is going to be the same, darin, damit, darauf, it, it can be either with, with it or with them. You just have to, in English it'll be different, but in German it's, it, that form doesn't change. Damit, with them, he painted his last works. Okay, and then um, sometimes they can uh, sort of anticipate other clauses. So usually a dust clause, a dependent clause. Um, so they can complete idiomatic combinations of verbs uh, or nouns and prepositions. So um, the type of da compound is best translated with a preposition plus the fact that, sometimes, or preposition plus a gerund, which is a verb ending in ing. And then um, the other, at other times, da compound is strictly functional purpose requiring no translation. Yeah. Viele Leute glauben nicht daran, dass die Erde rund ist. 
many people did not believe in the fact that the earth is round. Yeah. So the thing is, glauben an means to believe in, right? And they sort of go together, like, glauben an, they didn't believe uh, in it. It's like, many people did not believe in it that the earth is round. And so if you translate it that way, you could, it's, that doesn't really sound good in English. Many people did not believe in it that the earth is round. Because when you say daran in it, uh, what, do you, what do you mean in it? Well, in the fact that the earth is round. The daran is referring to this whole clause that's coming up. So in German it works, and in German it, it has to be that way, but in, in English if you translate it that way it doesn't sound very good. So you can either say in the fact that, or you can leave it out entirely. Many people did not believe that the earth is round. So sometimes if um, saying in it or about it or whatever it is sounds wrong and it sounds better without it, then just leave it out because not all words make it into the translation. Um, if they if they just ruin the sentence, you know, and the meaning and the meaning is retained, obviously. Die Mannschaft des Schiffes klagte darüber, dass die Reise zu lange dauerte. The ship's crew, die Mannschaft des Schiffes, complained, klagte, and then darüber. So claim uh, they uh, the ship's crew complained about it that the uh, trip lasted too long. So if you if you translate it that way. The ship's crew, crew complained about it, that the trip lasted too long. It doesn't sound very elegant. Uh, but when you say darüber, meaning about it, about what? About this whole next clause, about the fact that the trip lasted too long. So you can either say about the fact, or you can just leave it out. The ship's crew complained that the trip lasted too long. In diesem Artikel ist der Autor damit beschäftigt. So this would be, um, like if you said this in real life, it would, it would be emphasized. In diesem Artikel ist der Autor damit beschäftigt, die Basilika in Assisi zu beschreiben. Um, and so, in this article, the author is engaged, or the author, um, uh, yeah, is occupied or busies themselves um, with it. Yeah, so uh, engaged in it, or is occupied with it, to. Um, this to describe describe the um, basilica in SEC. yeah so it uh, really sounds clunky if you actually put the with it or in it in there in this article the author is, is engaged in it to describe the basilica in SEC. so you, you just take out the parts that make it um, clunky and then um, just make sure the, mean, the all the meaning is still there der große beitrag dieses males bestand darin die perspektivische Malerei zu fördern. So, the, this painter's great uh, contribution. So, this painter's genitive great contribution. The great contribution of this great painter consisted in... Yeah, so in English we say consist of or consist in, right? But in German it's bestehen in, uh, or also bestehen aus. But in this case, bestand darin, um, consisted in, um, so consisted in it, but cons consisted in what? The whole next, uh, the whole next infinitive phrase. So you just leave it out. Consisted in, and just move along with the sentence. Um, and then of course, idiomatic prepositional phrases are discussed in Kapitel 20. That's these, um, yeah, these uh, prepositional phrases that um, we did in chapter 20, just uh, not too long ago. Okay, and then of course idiomatic uses. Uses these are uh, quite common. So dabei means in the process of doing something. Er war gerade dabei, eine neue Entdeckung zu machen. He was in the process of making a new dis the discovery. So it's just you have to memorize that that's one of the meanings of dabei, and um, it is probably in the dictionary as well um, because it's very common. Ich bin dabei, something zu machen. So, so you'd have a zu phrase at the end of it. Ich bin dabei, meine Hausaufgaben zu machen. I'm doing my homework right now. I'm in the process of doing my homework. Especially because, you know, German doesn't have a present progressive tense. Um, like way back when we learned how to uh, translate um, present tense verbs, we said, Ich gehe means both I go and I am going. So because there is no like am going verb tense, sometimes dabei is used to really emphasize you're in, you're in the process of it, right? 
Um, and then dagegen, on the other hand, however, im Süden sind die meisten Kirchen katholisch, im Norden dagegen evangelisch. So, um, you, technically, dagegen would mean against it, right? And so you can kind of see how, like, there's this oppositional meaning, but um, you couldn't translate it as against it, because it's not, that's not really what it means, but you can see how it kind of means that. So, on the other hand, oh, however, so most of the churches in the South are Catholic. In the North, however, that's what this is, dagegen, they are Protestant. Yeah. So, in contrast, however, dagegen. Dahea, meaning therefore, for that reason. Um, so, dahea is like from from it, so it's sort of like from this reason, out of this reason. Um, das Projekt kostet zu viel Geld und daher wird es nicht ausgeführt. So, for that reason, therefore. The project costs too much money, and for that reason, and therefore, it won't be carried out. Dahia. Damit, so that, in order that, it's very common, it's probably the most common of all of them. Damit, of course, means with it, but in this idiomatic usage, it means so that, in order that. Um, so, uh, die Musiker sollen etwas leiser spielen, damit die Solisten gehört werden kann. The musicians should play somewhat more softly. So that, damit, the soloist can be heard. Um, so there's also, so das also exists, like so plus das with two s's. That also exists, and that means so that. It means the same thing. Um, but it's a little more rare. Uh, but if you do encounter so das, then that'll mean the same as damit. But damit is the standard one, and then so das is like an alternate one that you see sometimes. Yeah, and then... Uh, darauf, thereupon, or after that, die zwei Diplomaten gaben sich die Hand und gleich darauf unterschrieben sie den Vertrag. So, the two diplomats, die zwei Diplomaten, gaben sich die Hand, they gave each other the hand, meaning they shook hands, und gleich darauf, and immediately after that, gleich immediately, and then darauf, after that, unterschrieben sie den Vertrag. They signed the treaty. So, uh, darauf, right after that. Dazu means in addition. So, uh, da, die tra da die drei Kandidaten, uh, die drei Kandidaten wurden vorgestellt. The three candidates were introduced. Und dazu hat jeder eine kurze Rede gehalten. Um, so, and in addition, und dazu hat jeder and in Rede gehalten, and in addition, dazu, um, each one gave a short speech, yeah. in addition. Okay, so these just have to be practiced, get, um, get more used to the da compounds. So we have, for example, some sentences. Um, th this one is going to have the, the full noun, für das Geschenk, for the present, and then the, uh, the next one, the next sentence, is just the same thing but with the da compound, just so you can see how they match up with each other. So these ones are the, um, the simple ones, and then we'll get a little, uh, these are uh, the similar idea, but now we have some, oops, uh, so some are with the, um, with the da compound, with, a ob w with like an object, an inanimate object, and then some with the preposition plus the pronoun, which is for people. So these are mixed ones, just to make sure you can see the difference. And then we have some dialogues that have uh, the idiomatic usage of um, some of these. Uh, yeah, there, there are quite a lot of different meanings. This one, dabei, we said dabei is in the process of. And in this case, dabei actually means uh, being present at the, it's like, were you at Sabina's um, birthday party? And it says, or and then Uta, she says, um, no, this year I wasn't there, I wasn't present. So dabei, so look up the dictionary entry, entry for dabei, and it should have present as well. So you have to be able to tell from context which is which. So these are all going to be like tricky ways to use the, um, use the da compounds. So that's all for the da compounds at the moment. Viel Spaß beim Üben, have fun practicing these. Und wir sehen uns im nächsten Video. Bis gleich. Tschüss.